Night Tapes. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing another video request. In this case, we're going to be talking about the request here by BP0010 that says, Great content as always. I'd like to see a request on Kapower as a newer replacement for Mylar 3. So let's get to that. Let's work on getting Kapower set up in our Synology NAS. This, even though I'm doing this in Synology NAS, especially the newer versions of these videos, you can basically deploy anywhere because we're using Docker Compose. But I'm using a Synology NAS as a reference, right? Because it's easier to manage our storage and run our containers in the same place. Right? So the first thing we're gonna go into the GitHub page for Kapower and that's casvt slash Kapower. And when you come here, you can see that uh, Kapower is written in Python, which is weird because the R's are written in C sharp. So even though it looks like an R, it's not really an R in the sense of having the same way it works. But it does look like an R because they use the user interface styling that the R's use for this. So it looks kind of similar. And it says that Kapower is a software to build and manage a comic book library. So it's an alternative to Mylar fitting in the R suite of software. And it says that it allows you to build your digital library of comics, to add volumes, map them to folders, add all of that. And uh, it can download issues from many places, uh, rename them and move them. And it says that the process is automated and you can customize everything in the settings. And it's gonna check every day for things that you have marked as needed and then it'll download them immediately when it finds them. So basically it's Mylar, but in R form. And uh, as you can see, the user interface looks very R-ish. Falls in line with what the R's look like, but it's not running in C-sharp. So that's the interesting part. And then if we go into the documentation here, they have a, a, a guide on how to install it. They also have an option here for you to join a Discord server and how to make issues and requests here directly in GitHub. That's pretty good. The GitHub is pretty straightforward. It gives you all that you need. So let's go into the documentation part of it. And in here, as you can see, then we get the docs. And the docs are very small and straightforward. So basically it gives you how to um, do the installation with Docker manually and gives you information about how to set it up after you have installed it. And if you want more details, you can go into the home and you can see more other stuff here. So let's get to working with this then. As usual in our NAS, we're gonna go ahead and go into our folders and we're gonna create a config directory for Kapower and we're gonna create a project also for Kapower. All right, and once we have those created in here, then we're good to start working on the project and we're gonna go back into the documentation here. We're gonna go into the Docker setup, Docker Compose, we copy this. And then we're gonna go here, we're gonna create a new project. We're gonna name this Kapower. We're gonna say that we're gonna use the path for the Docker projects, specifically Kapower. And then we're gonna create a Docker Compose using what we just looking a lot better now. And they're gonna mount a volume like it says here. And basically that's it what we need, right? So we have to define the name of the container. It's gonna be Kapower. And this is a Docker Hub repository for this application. We're using the latest tag, that's perfect. And then in here it says that we have to map the database to the app database configuration. And we need a download folder that we're gonna map here. And then the final destination for our comics is gonna be here. So we need to rework this because of the way that I have set up the NAS. So if we go here, we'll see that we have an HTPC folder. And in here we have the stuff that is downloaded and it's not completed and the stuff that has already been completed. All right, so we have our comics folder here that we were using for Mylar. And in here, if we go into completed, then we have Mylar, but we don't have Kapower. So let's create a folder for that. So now we do have a folder for Kapower to use. So we need to mount this whole thing, the HTPC folder. That's what I'm gonna do instead of two different folders here. Let's remove this. I'm gonna mount this as HTPC. And in here, we need to put that path to that folder that we have here. We need the, the root folder. Let's go and put that here as the root folder, volume one HTPC in my case. So then from there, we can access the downloads that are in process and the completed uh, folder, right? And then this is gonna be what we had as the configuration path. 
but this is just gonna hold a database so let's go into that that would be docker configs kapower and that's what we're gonna put for the location where that database is gonna be stored so here we go so app database is mounted to that and HTPC inside the container is mount mounted to HTPC now it says remember here this is outside and in the container so the container is listening 56 56 but I'm gonna be using 8071 for this I've already used 8072 all the way up so we're going down for this and that's basically all that we need in here That'll create us a container using the latest image of that. It'll map a location for the database and for our files. So then the rest can be done inside the application. And we're gonna be listening on port 8071. So let's click next, next, and done, and wait for it to pull the image, extract, and finish creating the container. That's gonna take a little bit of time, so I'll be back when that is done. All right, it has finished building. We got our exit code zero and a notification here letting us know that the project was successfully built. So now we should be able to go back into the containers here, look for Kapower, and then follow the logs. One thing that I noticed about this application is that it's very, very snappy. It's very fast. So as you can see, it immediately was up and running. So that was something amazing that I found with this application, right? And I'm gonna need to have at least qubit turned running. So let me start that while we're doing that because it might need to use it for testing. So let's go now into the IP of the NAS on port 8071. And this is what we get immediately. We get the interface for Kapower telling us that we don't have anything in our library. And now we would have to follow the guide on setting this up. So that would be the part here on setup after installation, but it's pretty straightforward to follow. So if you go here into the settings, then that's pretty much it. Everything has good information here. So I'm not going to make any changes to this. The only changes that I want to make is convert downloaded files and extract co uh, covering multiple issues. So what kind of format I want? I want CBR. So that's going to be the, the format that I want the final files to be in, right? So it's going to do all the conversion and all that for us. Then another thing we need to do is we need to add the root folder. So the root folder is the location where it's going to put our finished comics, right? So in this case, we decided that it was going to be the HTPC folder, right? But inside that, we had the media folder, and inside that, we had comics. So let's validate that. So if we go here, we go HTPC, media, and then comics. And that's where we get all our, stu all our stuff. So that looks good, HTPC, media, comics. So we can add it here. Here it is. And it's... Uh, recognizing all the space that we have available and all that stuff so that's good we only have one folder so that's the only one we're going to add and then we're going to say save this and this doesn't give us like a notification or anything that let us know that it's saved so this is the way you validate you navigate out and come back and it looks correct now when it says download here this is where we have to specify the temporary folder for our downloads right so in this case i'm going to go back here and i'm going to identify where that's it so i said downloads then completed and then kapower that's that's going to be the directory where all the things are going to be stored when, once they're downloaded right and this application works different from other applications in the r suite because as far as i've noticed is it doesn't download from the usual sources it kind of seems to have its own place where it looks for stuff and then it it downloads stuff itself instead of relying on a third-party application. Like the only one that you can actually configure for this is Qubit Torrent. Uh, and we're going to see that now. But if, if we specify where we want uh, Kapower to drop our files, that's, that's good. This is going to be where the, the temporary folder, right? And then here we have to specify how do we want it to handle torrents. So do you want it to copy the files while it's seeding or you want to wait until it's done seeding to copy so i'm going to leave it at copy and then delete completed torrents mark that probably shouldn't because we already have configured qubit torrent to do that itself but i'm not sure how this application is going to work so i'm going to leave it marked and here's a tricky thing it says that it can download from a bunch of different sources other than usenet or torrent it's like torrent is the last option here and as you can see, it's like looking for torrents in one specific place called Get Comics. But it tries first to download from Mega, from Mediafire, from 
We Transfer, Pixel Dream Get Comics. So it's it, it has its own weird way of looking for comics. That's what we got. That's what we deal with. You can change the order, but that's basically what we have. If you check here, there's you just change the order. So we can save this, right? And then it gave us a problem here. So, oh, because I don't need volume one. I just need HTPC because that's inside the container. So save that. No problems now. Perfect. And then here in the download clients, basically tells you that this is the built-in clients that the application uses, which means it downloads directly from some websites. And basically for Mediafire, we transfer Pixel Dream, get comics. You can't do anything. It just tells you that they exist, but that's it. And then on Mega, you have the option of using your Mega account. So you bypass the five gigabyte limit per day if you have an account with Mega that allows you to pass that limit. So that's what you put here. If you if you just want to use the free, don't put anything like I'm going to do. Leave it like that. But then in here, you would configure the torrent client. And as you can see, you only have one option, which is Qubit Torrent. So then in this, you would put Qubit Torrent, and then you put the um, IP of the NAS, right? And then the port of Qubit Torrent, which in our case is 8080, and then the username, which in our case was Qubit Torrent in the videos, Qubit Torrent as the password, and we can test it. And as we can see now, we got the success message. So now we're able to connect to Qubit Torrent, we can add it. And now it shows up in here as an option to download content so this is it this is what we have to download stuff the only thing that is common is qubit torrent but we don't even have an option for usenet so let's uh go ahead with that and then go into the general section and here's where you would put your comic vine api key and if you need to enforce a password to log in into kapower you can do that here so kapower and here's your api key if you ever need it for uh, to connect to kapower from somewhere else and this looks good so for now i'm gonna save this let me put my comic vine api key outside of the video all right so now uh, the api key is in there everything is configured if we had anything in our library we could go here into library import scan and then it would look to see if we have anything but i don't have anything in the lab so that's why it says that and the way this works is pretty simple actually you just Go into volumes to see your current library if you have anything and if you want to add something then you come here into add volume and then you put the name of something that you want so let's say i want the walking dead so then i can search for that and it's going to bring a bunch of stuff here and then i can filter this out for example for by language and by the years the, how many issues it has so i would say probably the best way to filter out is the highest amount of issues that's going to give you the the real one right but you also can uh, filter by publisher and uh, volume numbers and stuff like that so let's say i want to download the walking dead i can select this here say add it to my root folder here for the comics and um you can mark here to so it starts searching for the missing volumes immediately and then you can have all their options here to filter but i honestly would say don't filter much because it's hard to find stuff with this application and then you just add it and then it's going to add it to your volumes to your library basically so if we go back into volumes now we see the walking dead and it pulls all the information as you can see the good thing about this application that is very snappy everything loads very fast so that part is amazing it's really good that the the job that the person has does uh, has done with this application here it says that it's monitored so that's good and in here the episodes are the issues are monitored so that's good so once you add something there you can trigger a manual search by clicking here this is going to do a manual search for like for the whole thing so it's going to give you a bunch of stuff right and as you can see most of the things that it finds it's from get comics i guess it's a website and you can also do episode by episode so you could basically go let's say issue number one you can go here to manually search for it it's going to search and then it's going to give you the results that it finds for that and then from here you can directly have it download or you can just tell it do it manually right so you can do it by issue by clicking the magnifying glass here and it's going to search for it itself and download it if it can and if you want the whole series you can tell it to uh, search for the monitored issues and then it's going to do that it's going to look for anything that it can find 
for this series. The one thing that I have found, I would say that like the issues, right, with this is that I tried on my own instance to see if I can find anything here. I tried with three different series. One of them was The Walking Dead, which is very popular, very easily accessible. And that I did find results for, right? But then I tried other stuff. I tried, for example, adding like Attack on Titan, for example, which is a very, very famous series that is available everywhere right now from Japan. It's a, a manga. And when I tried to search for this stuff, it just wouldn't find anything. And then I tried even like older stuff just to test. There's a volume of a cartoon named Condorito from Chile and Argentina. It's very old and I could not find anything for it. So I tried different options. And that's one thing that I would say is a drawback from this application is because of how it search for things. It, it relies only on those websites with those links to look for stuff when the reality is that most of the content that is shared for things like this is shared either through torrents or through Usenet. And this person doesn't even have an option here for us to set up indexers. So there's no way for us to search anywhere in the Usenet and there's no way for us to specify private indexers of torrents, for example, or even public indexers for torrents. So we're basically tied, we have our hands tied to what this person shows to be the backends to look for things. So that would be, in my opinion, the biggest drawback, that it's very hard to find things with this application. Let's just try it, for example, I'm gonna go here in Attack on Titan, I'm gonna do a manual search, and there's nothing, nothing comes up. Let go, let's go back to Condorito, try that too, and again, there's nothing. So it's very, very difficult right now to find anything with this application. So probably it's gonna be like very, you know, mainstream comics like, you know, Marvel, DC, and things like that, what you will probably find in here, rather than, you know, other more obscure or maybe older series. But other than that, I would say this is definitely impressive. Like the application is very snappy, it's very fast, it works really well. I mean, and even though it's written in Python, it behaves very similar to the R's. So I think that the developer is doing a great job. And let's also notice here that the application is actually on its first actual release. If we go into the releases, this has been on beta for a while. Like this is the first actual release of this application by this developer. So I think it's, you know, it's very in its infancy, but it's giving good promise because it's very snappy. You know, it's attempting to do other things to find uh, content, which I find is interesting, you know, allowing you to use mega upload, media fire, and other stuff like that. That's really good. But he should also allow people to use indexers, Usenet, and, you know, regular torrent sites, because that's going to allow you to access content, you know, have more accessibility of content. But so far, it's a good application, and that's how you set it up. That's the main thing that I wanted to get going in this video, as it was requested. But, you know, I just wanted to point out the drawbacks as of now on this application. But I think this person, you know, has something good in their hands and uh, good ideas going on. So hopefully in the near future, we can see this application evolving and um, getting better over time. So yeah, if you like this video, remember to click the like button under the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Remember that that helps us, that motivates us. So we can keep on creating content for you that you find useful. And also feel free to write in the comment section below anything that you would like me to cover, applications that interest you, issues that you may have had. And then we, uh, I'll, I usually try to reply to you directly in the comments if, if it's something you know simple that I could just point you on how to do. If not, then you should I try to go with a video explaining all those kind of things. And remember, I rely entirely on your donations. I am not monetizing this channel, so on my part, you should not get any YouTube ads on my videos. So please support me to continue this journey with you, as it is really hard to focus, you know, and, and spend time on creating these kinds of videos when you're actually not getting anything from it. So I really appreciate it. There's a link to PayPal in the description below, and also a Bitcoin address. You can donate with either one of those, and I'll really appreciate it. And that's gonna be it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.